Hello students, welcome to the lecture on labour welfare. And after this lecture, we will be able to learn the following objectives. Explain the concept of labour welfare. Discuss about the theories of labour welfare. Understand the principles and approach of labour welfare. Explain statutory and non-statutory labour welfare. Understand welfare measures inside and outside workplace. Let's start with some introduction to labour welfare. Labour welfare means anything done for the comfort and improvement, intellectual and social, of the employees over and above the wages paid, which is not a necessity of the industry. For conversion of materials into finished goods, human effort is needed, and such human effort is called labour. Labour is basically the labour force employed in an industry. It is the general category of the human effort that is used for the production of goods and services. The term welfare is defined as the economic well-being of an individual, group, or economy. For individuals, it is conceptualized by a utility function. For groups, including countries and the world, it is a tricky philosophical concept, since individuals fare differently. In an industrial sense, welfare is defined as physical and mental well-being of an employee. The term employee welfare means to fare well or to do well. It refers to physical, mental, affecting well-being of an individual. Welfare is relative to time and space. The welfare needs may vary from company to another company, and from place to place, and from time to time.
Concepts of labor welfare are social concept. The human person is a social animal. Therefore, labor welfare measures should see that a worker, his family, and community needs to be looked after besides the wages, even socially. It means caring to their ego and social status. Positive concept. In order to establish the concept of productivity, the attitudinal development, experiments need to be conducted with the help of behavioral sciences. By this, intrinsic abilities and capabilities of the employees can be developed and this will contribute in helping better interest in the job, thereby cause improvement in the quality of the work and in personal satisfaction. Relative concept. This helps to ensure that the employee is relatively changed as for the time. There needs some advancement, technological in nature, by the management. Negative concept. Creating a fear in the mind of the employee towards the work. This is a negative motivation transfer, demotion, etc. Let us now study about the objectives of labor welfare. Labor welfare aims at the whole development of the person of the working class. The labor welfare policies of any organization should keep in mind the following objectives. 1. To increase the standard of living of the working class. The laborer is more prone to exploitation from the capitalists if there is no standardized way of looking after their welfare. 2. To make the management feel the employees are satisfied about the work and working conditions. 3. To reduce the labor problems in the organization. There are various problems affecting the workers. Problems like absenteeism, turnover ratio, indebtedness, alcoholism, etc., which make the labor further weak both physically and psychologically. Labor welfare looks forward to helping the laborer to overcome these problems. 4. To recognize human values. Every person has his own personality and needs to be recognized and developed. It is in the hands of the management to shape them and help them grow. 5. Labor welfare helps to foster a sense of responsibility in the industry. 6. Labor welfare improves industrial relations and reduces industrial disputes. 7. To increase the bargaining power of the employees. Labor welfare measures like formation of works committee, workers' participation, trade union, etc. will surely help them to have better bargaining power. Let us now move to the principles and approach of labor welfare. Principles. Labor welfare activities look forward to the betterment of the individual and developing one's morale and personal fulfillment. On the part of the individual, it helps him to contribute better to the organizational objectives. There are certain principles to be kept in mind while introducing labor welfare policies as well as administering them. Principle of adequacy of wages. Labor welfare measures cannot be a substitute for wages. Workers have a right to receive adequate remuneration. In fact, payment or reward to the contribution made by the individual is the basic and necessary welfare measure that an organization can take. Welfare schemes coupled with adequate remuneration can bring good results for a company. Fulfilling ego and social status. A company has responsibilities to the workers as well as to the society. Worker is a burden to the society and the company has a responsibility to see. Welfare facility can convert an individual into a less unhappy person. The company has to lead the employee out of monotonous working and give responsibility as per his capacity. Principle of efficiency. Labor welfare and efficiency are very closely linked. Availability of adequate welfare facilities motivates the worker and increases his morale, and this ends in increase of the individual's efficiency. Principle of improving morale through motivation wages and salaries are for the skill one has earned. To improve the morale, the management has to give incentives like attendance bonus, productivity linked incentive, etc. Principle of totality of welfare. This principle emphasizes that the concept of labor welfare must spread throughout the hierarchy of an organization. Principle of self-development. This means that a person wishes to learn and acquire knowledge. If opportunity is given, he will give more result. Principle of effective communication. There is always a communication gap between employer and employees. The more the gap, the more the tension. This means the message should be passed without addition and addition, so that communication gap is filled to the maximum. Principle of contribution to national prosperity. 
The more welfare, the more interest from workers. The more is interest, the less is rejection. If lesser is rejection, higher are profit, and the government gets better revenue. Thus, labor welfare enhances national prosperity. Approach. The following are the principles on which successful implementation of welfare programmers depends. Social liability of industry. Industry, according to this principle, has an obligation or duty towards its employees to look after their welfare. Impact on efficiency. This plays an important role in welfare services and is based on the relationship between welfare and efficiency, though it is difficult to measure this relationship. Increase in personality. The development of the human personality is given here as the goal of industrial welfare, which, according to this principle, should counteract the baneful effects of the industrial system. Therefore, it is necessary to implement labor welfare services. Totality of welfare. This emphasizes that the concept of labor welfare must spread throughout the hierarchy of an organization. Coordination or integration. This plays an important role in the success of welfare services. From this angle, a coordinate approach will promote a healthy development of the worker in his work, home, and community. Responsibility. This recognizes the fact that both employers and workers are responsible for labor welfare. Accountability. This may also be called the principle of evaluation. Here, one responsible person gives an assessment or evaluation of existing welfare services on a periodical basis to a higher authority. Let us now discuss the scope and significance of labor welfare. Scope. A perusal of the definition indicates that the term labor welfare is a very comprehensive concept and is wide in its scope. It includes in its fold all efforts in the form of amenities and activities which vary from place to place, industry to industry, and time to time. Labor welfare activities are broadly classified as 1. statutory, 2. non-statutory or voluntary, and 3. mutual. Statutory provisions relating to welfare of workers have been promulgated by the government of India in different enactments. Voluntary welfare includes all those activities which employers undertake for their employees on voluntary basis. It is a philanthropic approach on the part of the employer to provide various welfare facilities to the workers over and beyond the statutory measures. Mutual welfare is a corporate enterprise undertaken by the workers themselves or their organization called trade unions. In India, the trade unions are financially weak and are unable to undertake such activities on a large scale. However, in advanced countries, the labor welfare activities are the important functions of trade unions. The concept of labor welfare embraces a multitude of activities, including all extramural, intramural activities, as well as statutory and non-statutory welfare measures undertaken by the employees, the government, and the trade unions to help workers and their families in the context of their industrial life. Significance the necessity for labor welfare is felt all the more in our country because ours is a developing economy aiming at rapid economic and social development. The need for labor welfare was felt by the Royal Commission on Labor in 1931. The philosophy of labor welfare and its necessity was mentioned in a resolution passed by the Indian National Congress on Fundamental Rights and Economic Program in its Karachi session in 1931. The resolution demanded that the organization of economic life in the country must confirm to the principles of justice, and it might secure a decent standard of living. Following motives and considerations have promoted employers to provide welfare measures. It is helpful in winning over their employees' loyalty and to combat trade unionism. It builds up a stable labor force by reducing labor turnover and absenteeism. It raises the morale of workers. One of the reasons for provision of welfare activities in recent times by certain employers is to save themselves from heavy taxes on surplus. The motive behind provision of welfare activities by some companies is to enhance their image and to create an atmosphere of goodwill between the labor and management and also between management and the public. The social evils prevalent in the labor force such as gambling, drinking, etc. are reduced to the minimum. Let us now move to the welfare theories. There are some theories which constitute the conceptual framework of the labor welfare. Policy theory. This theory is based on the contention that a minimum standard of welfare is necessary for workers. 
According to this theory, owners and managers of industrial undertakings make use of every opportunity to engage in this kind of exploitation. The policy theory involves several stages of implementation, enactments, periodical supervision, and punishment, religious theory. The theory views were an essentially religious. Religious feelings are what sometimes prompt employers to take up welfare activities in the belief of benefits either in his life or in support after life. Any good work is considered an investment because both the benefactor and the beneficiary are benefited by the good work done by the benefactor. Philanthropic theory. Philanthropy is the inclination to do or practice of doing well to one's fellow men. Man is basically self-centered and acts of these kinds stem from personal motivation. When some employers take compassion on their fellow men, they may undertake labor welfare measures for their workers. Trusteeship theory. In this theory, it is held that the industrialists or an employer holds the total industrial estate, properties and profits occurring from them in trust for the workmen, for him and for society. It assumes that the workmen are like miners and are not able to look after their own interests, that they are ignorant because of lack of education. Placating theory. As labor groups are becoming better organized and are becoming demanding and militant, being more conscious of their rights and privileges that even before their demand for higher wages and better standards increases. The placing theory advocates timely and periodical acts of labor welfare to appease the workers. Public relations theory. This underlining philosophy behind this theory is an atmosphere of goodwill between management and labor and also between management and the public. Labor welfare programs under this theory work as a sort of an advertisement for companies and helps build up good and healthy public relations. Functional theory. The concept behind this theory is that a happy and healthy person is a better, more productive worker. Here, welfare is used as a means to secure, preserve, and develop the efficiency and productivity of labor. Labor welfare work can be, one, statutory, two, non-statutory, voluntary. Statutory welfare measures, as the term itself indicates, are those services whose implementation depends on the coercive power of the government. This, the government ensures by the enactment of certain rules to enforce the minimum standards of health and safety of workers. Non-statutory welfare measures include all those activities which we may undertake for the welfare of employees on a voluntary basis. A committee of experts on welfare facilities for industrial workers was constituted by the ILO in 1963. Did you know? In 1961, the Volunteer Graduate Scheme became the Overseas Service Bureau, an organization with Jim Webb as its founding director. Let us now discuss welfare measures of inside and outside the workplace. The social and economic aspects of the life of a worker have direct influence on the social and economic development of the nation. There is every need to take care of the worker to provide both statutory and non-statutory facilities. A comprehensive list of welfare activities is given by Morthean, his monumental work on labor welfare. He divides welfare measures into two broad groups, namely, welfare measures inside the workplace, welfare measures outside the workplace. Welfare measures inside the workplace, conditions of the work environment. One, neighborhood safety and cleanliness. A, housekeeping, upkeeping of premises. B, workshop, room, sanitation and cleanliness. Temperature, humidity, ventilation, lighting, elimination of dust, smoke, fumes, gases, etc. C, control of effluence. D. Convenience and comfort during work, that is operatives posture, seating arrangements. E. Distribution of working hours and provision for rest hours, meal times and breaks. F. Workman safety measures, that is, maintenance of machines and tools. G. Fencing of machines, helmets, aprons, goggles and first aid equipments. H. Supply of necessary beverages, pills and tablets, like salt tablets, milk, soda, etc. I. Notice boards, posters, pictures, slogans, information or communication. 2. Conveniences. A. Urinals and laboratories, wash basins, bathrooms, provision for spittoons, waste disposal. 
B. Provision of drinking water, water coolers. C. Canteen services, full meal, mobile canteen. D. Mobile phones and email facilities. E. Management of workers' clock rooms, restrooms, reading rooms, and sectional library. 3. Workers' health services. A. Factory health center, dispensary, ambulance, emergency aid, medical examinations for the workers. B. Health education, family planning, awareness program on HIV, AIDS. 4. Women and child welfare. A. Antenatal and postnatal care, maternity aid, creche, and child care. B. Women's general education, family planning services. C. Separate services for women workers, that is, lunch rooms, urinals, restrooms. 5. Economic services. A. Cooperatives, loans, financial grants, thrifts, and saving schemes budget knowledge, unemployment insurance, health insurance, employment bureau. b. Profit sharing and bonus schemes, transport services, provident fund. c. Gratuity and pension, reward and incentives, workmen's compensation for. d. Injury, family assistance in times of need.
other measures outside the workplace. Housing, bachelor's quarters, family residences according to types and rooms. Water, sanitation and waste disposals. Roads, parks, recreation and playground. Schools, nursery, primary, secondary and high schools. Markets, cooperatives, consumer and credit societies. Bank and ATM, transport, communication, post, telegraph, internet, telephone, etc. Health and medical services, dispensary, emergency ward, outpatient and inpatient care, family visiting, family planning, recreations, games, clubs, craft centers, cultural programs, study circle, open air theater, swimming pool, athletics, gymnasia, etc. Watch and ward, security, community leadership development, council of elders, women's association, clubs, youth clubs, etc. Let us now study about the state agencies and voluntary agencies. The conservative labor welfare policy changed during the Second World War, when the government took several steps to boost the workers' morale and increase their productivity. The labor welfare schemes initiated then and continued. Voluntary welfare includes all those activities which employers undertake for their workers on a voluntary basis. Now in the end, let us summarize what we have learned in this lecture. Recreation is commonly taken to be the opposite of work. It has an important bearing on the individual's personality as well as its capacity to contribute to the social development. The scope of employee welfare cannot be limited since it differs according to social customs and the degree of industrialization in different countries and at different times. The resolution demanded that the organization of economic life in the country must confirm to the principles of justice and it might secure a decent standard of living. Education plays a crucial role in motivating and preparing the workers for constant change and development that should necessarily happen in industry. Classical economics and all microeconomics labor is one of four factors of production, the others being land, capital and enterprise.